I joined DRDL on the 1st of June 1982. To the horror of many old timers, I started inviting people from the Indian Institute of Science, Indian Institutes of Technology, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and many other educational institutions where related experts could be found. I felt that the stuffy work centers of DRDL needed a breath of fresh air. I made a presentation in the South Block. Although some questioned our ambitious proposal, everyone was excited about the idea of India having her own missile systems. When the Defence Minister, R. Venkatraman, suggested that we launch an integrated guided missile program instead of making missiles in phases, we could not believe our ears. The proposal of the missile development project had been turned overnight into the blueprint of an integrated program with far-reaching consequences. When I presented the government sanction letter before the Missile Technology Committee at DRDL, they were enthused with fire and action. The proposed projects were christened in accordance with the spirit of India's self-reliance. Thus, the surface-to-surface -surface weapon system became Prutvi, the Earth. The tactical core vehicle was called Trishu, the trident of Lord Shiva. The surface-to-air defense system was named Akash, the sky and the anti-tank missile project Nag, Cobra. I gave the name Agni, fire, to my long-cherished dream of REX, re-entry experiment launch vehicle. Dr. Arunachalam came to DRDL and formally launched the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program on the 27th of July, 1983. It was a great event in which every single employee of DRDL participated. Everybody who was somebody in Indian aerospace research was invited. This was the second most significant day in my career, next only to the 18th of July 1980 when the SLV-3 had launched Rohini into the Earth's orbit. The launch of the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program was like a bright flash on the Indian scientific firmament. Missile technology had been considered the domain of a few selected nations in the world. People were curious to see how we were going to achieve all that was promised. We were at a meeting laying down the targets for 1984 when news came of Dr. Brahm Prakash's death on the evening of the 3rd of January at Bombay. It was a great emotional loss for me. His compassion and humility were exemplary. His healing touch on the day of the failed SLV E1 flight surfaced in my memory, serving to deepen my sorrow. If Professor Sarabhai was the creator of VSSC, Dr. Brahm Prakash was the executor. He had nurtured the institution when it most needed nourishment. His humility mellowed me and helped me discard my aggressive approach. His humility did not consist merely in being modest about his talents or virtues, but in respecting the dignity of all those who worked under him and in recognizing the fact that no one is infallible, not even the leader. He was an intellectual giant with a frail constitution. He had a childlike innocence and I always considered him a saint among scientists. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi expressed her desire to personally apprise herself of the progress of the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program. The entire organization was filled with an aura of excitement. On the 19th of July, 1984, 
Srimati Gandhi visited DRDL. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was a person with a tremendous sense of pride in herself, in her work and in her country. The esteem in which she held our work in the field of guided missiles boosted our morale immensely. We were working on the action plan that had emerged from the earlier month's review when the news of Srimati Gandhi's assassination broke. Srimati Gandhi's death was a tremendous loss to the scientific community. She had given impetus to scientific research in the country. Her son Rajiv Gandhi took over as the new Prime Minister of India. He went to the polls and obtained a mandate from the people to carry forward the policies of Mrs. Gandhi, the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program being a part of them. Work on Prithvi was nearing completion when we entered 1988. Prithvi was launched at 11.23 hours on the 25th of February. It was an epoch-making event in the history of rocketry in the country. Prithvi was not merely a surface-to-surface -surface missile. It was, in fact, the basic module for all future guided missiles in the country. The launch of Prithvi sent shockwaves across the unfriendly neighboring countries. The response of the Western Bloc was initially one of shock and then of anger. A seven-nation technology embargo was clamped making it impossible for India to buy anything even remotely connected with the development of guided missiles. The emergence of India as a self-reliant country in the field of guided missiles upset all the developed nations of the world. The Agni team was comprised of more than 500 scientists. Many organizations were networked to undertake this huge effort of launching Agni. The Agni launch had been scheduled for the 20th of April 1989. This was going to be an unprecedented exercise. Unlike space launch vehicles, a missile launch involves wide-ranging safety hazards. All activities preparatory to the launch went according to schedule. We had decided to move the people living in nearby villages to safety at the time of the launch. This attracted media attention and led to much controversy. By the time the 20th of April 1989 arrived, the whole nation was watching us. Foreign pressure was exerted through diplomatic channels to abort the flight trial. But the Indian government stood behind us like a rock and staved off any distraction to our work. We were at T14 seconds when the computer signaled hold, indicating that one of the instruments was functioning erratically. This was immediately rectified. Meanwhile, the downrange station asked for a hold. In another few seconds, multiple holds were necessitated and this resulted in irreversible internal power consumption. We had to abort the launch. The missile had to be opened up to replace the onboard power supplies. The press was up in arms and fielded various interpretations of the postponement of the flight to suit the fancies of their readership. Cartoonist Sudhir Dar sketched a shopkeeper returning a product to the salesman, saying that like Agni, it would not take off. Another cartoonist showed one Agni scientist explaining that the launch was postponed because the press button did not make contact. The Hindustan Times showed a leader consoling press reporters. There is no need for any alarm. It's a purely peaceful, non-violent missile. After a detailed analysis conducted virtually round the clock for the next 10 days, our scientists had the missile ready for launch on the 1st of May. 1989. But again, during the automatic computer checkout period at T10 seconds, a hold signal was indicated. 
A closer inspection showed that one of the control components, S1TVC, was not working according to the mission requirements. The launch had to be postponed yet again. Now such things are very common in rocketry and quite often happen in other countries too. But the expectant nation was in no mood to appreciate our difficulties. The Hindu carried a cartoon by Keshav, showing a villager counting some currency notes and commenting to another, Yes, it's the compensation for moving away from a hut near the test site. A few more postponements and I can build a house of my own. Another cartoonist designated Agni as IDBM, intermittently delayed ballistic missile. Amul's cartoon suggested that what Agni needed was to use their butter as fuel. Detailed analysis of the component failure during the second attempt led to the refurbishment of the control system. Finally, the launch was scheduled for the 22nd of May. The previous night, Dr. Arunachalam, General K.N. Singh and I were walking together with the Defence Minister, K.C. Pant. It was a full moon night. It was high tide and the waves crashed and rolled as if singing of God's glory and power. Would we succeed with the Agni launch tomorrow? This question was foremost in all our minds. Breaking a long silence, the Defence Minister finally asked me, Kalam, what would you like me to do to celebrate the Agni success tomorrow? What did I want? What was it that I did not have? What could make me happier? And then I found the answer. We need a hundred thousand saplings to plant, I said. His face lit up with a friendly glow. You are buying the blessings of Mother Earth for Agni, the Defence Minister quipped. We will succeed tomorrow. The next day, Agni took off at 7.10 hours. It was a perfect launch. The missile followed a textbook trajectory. All flight parameters were met. It was like waking up to a beautiful morning from a nightmarish sleep. We had reached the launch pad after five years of continuous work at multiple work centers. We had lived through the ordeal of a series of snags in the last five weeks. We had survived pressure from everywhere to stop the whole thing. But we had done it at last. It was one of the greatest moments of my life. A mere 600 seconds of elegant flight washed off our entire fatigue in an instant. What a wonderful culmination of our years of labor. I wrote in my diary that night, do not look at Agni as an entity directed upward to deter the ominous or exhibit your might. It is fire in the heart of an Indian do not even give it the form of a missile as it clings to the burning pride of this nation and thus is bright. Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi called the Agni launch a major achievement in our continuing efforts to safeguard our independence and security by self-reliant means. The technology demonstration through Agni is a reflection of our commitment to the indigenous development of advanced technologies for the nation's defense. Till the Agni launch, the Indian armed forces had been structured for a strictly defensive role to safeguard our nation, to shield our democratic processes from the turbulence in the countries around us and to raise the cost of any external intervention to an unacceptable level. With Agni, India had reached the stage where she had the option of preventing wars involving her. Swadharmam abhi chavekshya na vikampitum 
ಮರ್ಹಸಿ ಧರ್ಮ್ಯಾತ್ರೇಯೋನ್ಯಕ್ಷತ್ರಿಯ ವಿದ್ಯತೆ ಅದಚೇತ್ವಿಮಂ ಧರ್ಮ್ಯ ಸಂಗ್ರಾಮ ನ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಸಿ ಸ್ವಧರ್ಮ ಕೀರ್ತಿ ಪಾಪಮ್ಮಾಪ್ಸಿ ಪಾಪಮ್ಮಾಪ್ಸಿ